morning. So, I understand the theme has something to do with the journey ending and a journey beginning. Guess what? Your journey never ends. Do you know this? Yes. Yeah? Well, let me understand your age groups here, because I see some very pretty and adorable young people and some very, very, very gorgeous and very honorable looking young men and ladies here. So let's understand the age groups. Who do we have here? Young man, how old are you? I cannot hear you. You're going to have to stand up and speak loudly, confidently. Eight? What is your name, eight-year-old? I can't hear you. Andre? DeAndre. DeAndre. Well, thank you, DeAndre. Eight years old. Is DeAndre the youngest person here today? No. No? Who's younger than DeAndre? Young lady, please stand up and introduce yourself. How old are you? You're seven. And what is your name? Can't hear you. Dara. Dara? All oh, right. So we have Dara, that's seven. Okay. And now the oldest, I guess, teenager? Well, if you're in your 20s, that's still acceptable. Everyone's pointing to one person. Okay, young lady, who's dead up? <laughs> your name? Alex. Alex. How old are you? Do you want to share your age? 25. 25. <laughs> I'm 47 years old, and I'm going to tell you more about myself at the end of my presentation, but I think it's more important that I share something else with you. That I share with you that you always measure yourself by yourself. You always want to be better than the person that you were yesterday. So you can look at your neighbors right now and you can compare yourself to a lot of people. You can see people with big homes, with big cars, looking good, looking like the Kardashians. But the truth is, who do you want to be in life? Right? And who's going to guide you through that journey? You have to define who you want to be. So once you define who you want to be, you have to decide that it's always going to be better than who you were yesterday. Right? So how do you determine what those items are that have to be better than who you were yesterday? And that's what I'm going to talk to you about. It's not everything, but these are some things that I've learned in life that I would like to share with you. Are you open to listening to that? Yeah? Okay. So, and I need notes and I have contacts on because like I said, I'm 47, I'm not that young. So, and the lighting is not that good right here, so bear with me. Education. So I heard Dr. Gideon and Leblanc, they, they did a really good job about talking about education with you. And they shared some very important pearls. So for us, for Haitians and Haitian Americans, it is foundational. You know that, right? What are the five professions that your parents are insisting you can do? No, I see him. Okay. All right. All right. Dentist? 
Meaning when you decide to go to college, when you're in high school and you're making these difficult choices or you don't know what you want to be, you might have to, de you might have to go to college undeclared. Does anybody know what that is? You don't know what you're going to do, but you still apply and you usually, you know, it's actually usually easier for admission sometimes to the college you want to get into, sometimes and you get into the college, and then you then later choose exactly what you want to specialize in, and then you can go ahead and apply to the specialty college so that you can pursue that specialty or degree. Like if you want engineering, or if you want to be an English major, or if you want to go into nursing, then you can do that, which is a really good option instead of you choosing something that you're not sure about and making some bad decisions. So that to me is very important that you're honest with yourself and you look at how you're investing in yourself. Are we on the same page? Yes. Okay. What else do I have to share with you? Ah. Does everybody know what a hustle is? Yes. Okay. Describe it to me. I think I want one of the older children to describe a hustle. Older child. Someone, come on. Young man, please stand up. What is a hustle? Like, if you're doing a sport, like, 
this course tell you hustle, hustle, hustle. So that so it might mean like keep pushing yourself and keep working hard until you achieve your goals. So like hustle, hustle, hustle. So like try to achieve your goals. So like keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing until you reach your goal. My name is Edwin Lewis 16. I am from St. Martha Catholic Church. I like the way he described the hustle. Because I wanted to talk to you guys about a hustle. And I wanted to talk to you about your career or a job. So eventually, after you go to school, you're going to have to work, right? So some people actually have a career out of it where it's a profession and they spend their whole life, like a nurse can you know, spend uh, their lifetime in nursing and they might go further in their education and they hold different types of positions in nursing and they're happy there and it's a full career in nursing. Then there's people who go to work and it's just the job for them. It's a means to an end, right? Where they go to work, they're not necessarily very happy with what they do, it's not necessarily very satisfying, but it pays the bills for them, right? And I'm saying this to you because I understand that a lot of people today they might not be very happy with what they do for a living. I love what I do for a living. I'm very happy with what I do for a living. But most people I know, they're not happy. But they do it because they have children to care for, like you, right? They have a home, so they have a mortgage to pay for, they have to buy clothes, they have to pay tuition. There's a lot of responsibilities. So you are at a very pivotal point in your life where you get to make a lot of decisions. And while you're making these decisions, I want you to understand that everything might not work out the way you think it's going to work out. And you might wind up in a very, very happy and lovely career where you love what you do. Or you might find yourself in a job where you have to go to work every day and you're just doing it because you have to do it. Right? Either way, whether you're happy or you're just doing it because you have to pay your bills, disasters can happen in life. And everyone's here to tell you how wonderful life is, how your future is so bright, and I want you to know your future is bright. But I also want you to be prepared for when things do not go very well. And this is where a hustle comes into play. Because if you have a hustle, a hustle allows you some options. A hustle allows for you to, let's say, I might be somebody who has a degree in media, but my hustle allows me to do people's nails and I have a license to do people's nails. I don't do that. I don't, you know, I, I just don't have the time to do it, but I have that little hustle and occasionally I can do, I can use that license to do that. So now I'm out of work because the whole internet thing is not working out, media is not working out, things have changed in how media is, is being put out there. And it happened to people because media before was something that was on paper, in newspapers and magazines, and then the internet came along and it changed their jobs for them and they were out of work for a while until they figured out how to reinvent themselves. And if you did not have a hustle in life, you were out of work. People had to still pay their bills. So they took their hustles if they had one, and they were able to go and make money on the side, and they were able to do certain things with the hustle. Can anybody tell me what you think you could do with a hustle? Yes? Can't hear you. Thank you. 
see what you can, such as. I want to be an inventor, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. I want to be an inventor, so I'm going to go to engineers. I want to be an inventor, so I'm going to go to engineering school. Okay, so she's going to be an inventor and she's going to go to engineering school. Right? And she said that you have a hustle, you can use it to achieve your ends. And let me tell you, it's very important because bills still have to be paid. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you so much. You still have to pay bills, right? You still have to do a lot. When people aren't working, your credit score goes down. A lot of things happen in life to you. And that might be too much information for you right now, but there's this whole economic part about life that you need to learn about. And I know nobody's taking notes. I don't see people with notepads out here, right? That really goes with you growing up. And if you don't have a hustle, the money that's coming in from unemployment is never really enough to cover that gap. You're too busy paying just the place you live in for it with that. And the hustle can help you keep your credit score up so that you can have a means to an end when that little gap is done and you're back in the workforce and you're now finding yourself back in your career and you're happy. So my whole point about this hustle thing it's just I want you to remember, and you don't have to take the notes, I was just kidding, okay? Is that remember that you should have an option of something else that you can do to make money in life that is not directly related to what you went to school for. So when things are not going well, you have something else to lean on. That is a job that we have in the community to teach you. I know very few Haitian parents that don't have a hustle. Dr. Lipper is looking at me like I don't understand. A lot of Haitian parents have a hustle. And then John, it might not be my generation, but let me tell you, the generation of my mother, they did so much. They bought and sold jewelry. They bought linen from Italy and resold them. They were working in jobs as in nursing homes and they were working in jobs cleaning offices and they had two or three side hustles going on simultaneously. If they lost their main job today, their hustle was always there to bridge the gap for them to the next thing they had to do. Our generations have lost the hustle because our parents wanted us to do better, but guess what? We should not lose that ability to have a hustle because we still need that in life and that's what I'm sharing with you. A hustle is still very important. So I want you to remember that, okay? <laughs> Emotional maturity. Does anybody know what that is? You know, if I can't hear you, what's going to happen? Emotional maturity. Do you know what that is? I mean, I thank you so much, but let's try to see if somebody else will step up. Emotional maturity? Yes.
emotional maturity is described as the ability to uh, face certain problems without panicking or without feeling a ton of stress. So you can be faced with a certain problem, say, um, say with me, college apps, and I will be running around panicking because I know that there are certain paths I can take. Ultimately, I want you to be there, and I want you to think about that. In the moment, everything seems like you cannot handle life. Maybe you have to cry, maybe that needs to happen. If you need to go into the bathroom and cry, do it. If you're home with family and close friends and you need to express that to them, do it. Collect your thoughts, but think about the environment that you're in and what has to be said and how you have to say it. And I know a lot of us are on Instagram and a lot of electronic apps these days. And I know you're probably saying, what's electronic apps? We, we say Twitter. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> whatever it is, I would suggest you avoid those forums <laughs> and you use emotional maturity in that moment to decide the next step you're going to take. It is very difficult. It is very hard. It takes a lot of practice in order to make the right decision and speak appropriately when you're very upset. I know it's not easy, right? And nothing I'm saying right now makes a lot of sense, but I want you to remember this conversation. And, and one day you're going to say, that woman was saying something about maturity and how I feel. And I, at that point, you'll Google it. And when you Google it, I want you to then find some ways to practice emotional maturity. Some of you already have it in this room. I don't, you know, I don't have to tell you how to find it. But if you don't, and some of you are very young, you're seven or eight years old, this is a great time to hear about this. Because now you know there's something out there that can help you control your mood. When you feel like you need something and you're not getting it, and the only way to show your frustration is to jump up and down and scream, now there's something that can show you how there's a better way to get what you want, okay? So, what is it called? <laughs> Emotional? Okay, thank you. So, uh, Dr. Gideon stole my next thing. I think he saw my notes. I had this whole thing prepared about community and group and individual. So, I do work for a healthcare union. It's one of the largest healthcare unions in the world. And again, like I said, I'll tell you more about that at the end. Um, and we are all about individuals coming together to make a difference. But in this moment, I want to talk to you about you and your role in the world as a change maker. So, you have you and the group of people that you deal with, whether it's church, school, your friends, and your responsibility, or family, and your responsibility to them in those environments, and who you choose to be to them in those environments. Then you have you, the individual, who might be in a better position than another person. This person might not be your friend. You might have never met this person at all, and one day you come across them and they're telling you a story about their life. And I'm not talking about you get an email and somebody's fishing. You know, I'm stuck at Heathrow Airport, you know, I need a thousand dollars. I'm not talking about that kind of meeting. I'm actually talking about you meet someone and you're sitting next to them and they're telling you about how they just had a really horrible day or how, how bad life is treating them. And because you, because of all the support you've had, because of all the love that God has given you, because of all the favor that God has given you in your life, because of your parents, because of your family, because of your friends, 
because of your dedication to yourself and your life, have made it. And you are some big PhD doctor making a lot of money are listening to this one person with all their problems. And you might be the one person who could make a difference in that person's life. I want you to think and remember this moment and say to yourself that I am the person who will make a difference in that person's life. Do not think that you can allow for that person to leave and go somewhere else so somebody else can help them. They might never get that help. And I say this to you because it is about responsibility for each other. And I cannot tell you how many times I've heard stories from people who are very successful talk about the one time they spoke to somebody and they didn't even know who they were talking to, who made a big, huge difference and had a huge impact on their life in that one moment they gave them ten dollars out of their pocket they gave them a place to sleep that night whatever it is uh, they put them in touch with a contact for a job you know whatever it is that somebody's saying to you keep your heart and mind and soul open because you might be the person who might be the one to absolutely change their life. You got me? Yes. Okay. So, what is the future? Um, here we go. I know I spoke to you about opportunity and what that could look like for you. I, I am very hopeful. I see that you have a lot of support in this room and that's awesome. Uh, I've spoken to some of the adults that are here and I see that they really have a lot of love for what they do with you and they only have your best interests at heart. Good or bad, no matter what, they were telling me that you could always come to them. That is amazing. That is amazing that you have that resource. Because let me tell you, the Haitian parents that I came from, and I was saying this earlier, you could not come home and complain about anything. Because the minute you came home and complained, it was like, what is your problem? Right? Children are not allowed to have problems. You, you, know, you simply are supposed to go to school and do your work. But the opportunity you have in this room, the people who have surrounded you to provide you with love and support, they are actually here to tell you, we understand you. If there's any issue out there, we are here. Good or bad, come to me first. Do you understand what that means? What an amazing opportunity that is for you? To have somebody who only has your best interest at heart tell you, come to me first. Yes? 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 So what happens if you're driving tomorrow and the cops pull you over and you get arrested? You're going to call your mom. Yes. 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 Because life is not only good, things happen to you and sometimes you had nothing to do with it. And I'm here to tell you, do not hide it. Because if you want your journey to end, it will. But if you always want your journey to re-begin, you are in control of that. And you have to trust the adults around you that they are going to be there to help you make the right decisions for you. Okay? This is very important about who you are and how you decide to take your next steps in life. Listen, everything is stressful. School is very stressful. I had somebody telling me, and their father's a doctor, and their father's insisting that they had to sit in the library and study non-stop at their college because that's the only way they were going to qualify to go to medical school themselves. And this kid was crying, and he's like, I don't know what to do, Pat. I'm so frustrated. I really hate this. And I actually said to him, did you tell your dad that you feel this way? And he said, no, my dad doesn't want to hear that. And I said, listen, I know your dad doesn't want to hear that, but you have to tell him this. 
And oh, by the way, yes, it is very stressful. And after this, you have some choices to make because you can actually choose which school will be for you because now you know you don't like this type of academic environment. You have some choices you can make in choosing what type of school you want to go to because some schools you go to, you study really, really hard to get into. And then you get there and they're carrying you around so you can succeed. Do you know that? You get into a Harvard University. The game is all about getting into Harvard. That's the future. You get into Harvard, you have to do the work to get in. And you can study once you get there, but it's not really about the work at Harvard. But you get into Cornell University, you fight to get into Cornell, and you fight to get out of Cornell. I just want you to know. So you have to do your research about the environment that you're going to put yourself in and be true to who you are and where you want to be. You have choices you can make. And one thing I'm confident about, some choices we have and that you have, and you have more choices than I did because my mom was not an English speaker. Right? I had to do the research myself. Dr. Lemoyne, did you do the research yourself? You did the research yourself. Okay. So, you have people like us. So you have people who are already telling you some of the secrets. Half the research is done for you. So I'm telling you, look at the academic list. Who has the academic rigors? And choose accordingly. Don't go to a school where you know you don't want to sit in the library crying that you don't want to study at all hours of the night because it's about your success. Choose your careers wisely so that you can succeed. Amen? So guys, as I was telling you that I will tell you about myself. So, I am a medical doctor. I left my medical career and worked on the executive management side of medicine for a while. I left executive management of medicine to work for the largest healthcare union in the world. There I work on politics, I work on social justice, and I work on workers' rights. And lately, a lot on immigration, and you can guess why. And I'm going to tell you, I've always been very open to everything that comes to me in life. Right now, my mom died in 1980. Um, no, I'm sorry, 19, uh, in 2008. It's probably turning in her grave <laughs> because she probably want to see me with a stethoscope around my neck. But I'm going to tell you, I go to work every day and I am very, very happy because my union, that represents almost 500,000 members, has about 50,000 Haitian and Haitian American members in it. My union has people that look like us. The majority of the members of my union are female. The majority of the members in my union might start out as a janitor, but because we have funds that helps with education, not only they proceed and become professionals in the workplace, it, even in healthcare, nurses, some become doctors, etc. But the next generation, their lives change. They offer scholarships to their children. Their children, who typically cannot afford to go to SAT prep schools, are afforded that opportunity to 1199. The children are given the opportunity to go away to camp, something that these parents cannot afford on their own. So the workers' rights that we provide come near none other. The politics that we work on in terms of educating people that you have a vote and your vote matters gives our union a lot of power. So. In my lifetime, we've had a black president, something I never thought I'd see. But I didn't do that. The voting power did that. And many people went out and voted. So everyone voted, everyone will count. How many of you know that if you're 17 years old, how many people do we have in here that's 17 or older? Are you aware in New York State now you can pre-register to vote by the time you turn 18? 
right? And do you know that your vote makes a difference in this next election? Because for some of us, not re-electing Donald Trump is a better option for us. Not everybody lives in New York. And New York is considered a place that's much safer than, any, than other states. You have brothers and sisters that live in Florida that are suffering in health care. So I'm sharing all of this with you because I wake up every day and I have a job that's a career that I love and I'm happy and I effectuate more people's lives through what I do than when I was dealing with patients. I changed their lives much more working with 1199. I see legislation dealing with hospitals for New York, for DC, before it even goes in front for votes. I am dealing with policy. I am seeing things way before they go up for a vote. That's what I'm doing now. So I offer to you, when things come at you in your life, I want you to remain open and think whatever you intended, whatever you intended to become in your life, God might have a greater journey in mind for you. So I want you to focus on that journey. And just remember this moment that I'm sharing with you my love. I want you to take this and go home and pray on it. Pray that he guides you for the rest of your life.